Former Cy Young Award winner Trevor Bauer, who has been out of Major League Baseball now for a period of a few years due to some domestic violence uh, allegations, issues uh, that were going uh, against him in terms of, I guess, sexual misconduct would probably be the best way to put it. There were a number of women, I believe, who had alleged that Trevor Bauer had assaulted them during sexual encounters, and there has been uh, no prosecution of Trevor Bauer. Charges were not moved forward. Bauer ended up going to Japan. He pitched over there for a while. I believe that he's in Mexico uh, currently, uh, much like James Taylor once was, and he's trying to find a pathway back into Major League Baseball, clearly from a talent perspective, Trevor Bauer could help probably any team in Major League Baseball. He won the Cy Young Award in 2020. So we're talking about a guy who obviously is not far removed from his prime. The Dodgers paid a pretty penny to get Trevor Bauer on the free agent market. And within short order, he was embroiled in a lot of controversy uh, related to these alleged sexual indiscretions. Uh, at one point, I know that there was one female that uh, I believe she actually ended up having charges brought against her for uh, attempting to ex essentially extort him uh, by making allegations against him. And yet, without any prosecution going on in any legal avenue, Trevor Bauer still finds himself on the outside looking in at Major League Baseball while clearly a pitcher who is of the talent to be there. And beyond that, we're talking about a guy who the Dodgers are on the hook for his contract. I believe he's available to anybody who wants to sign him essentially for the Major League uh, minimum. And we can take a look here. Trevor Bauer now uh, alleging that he's been blackballed from Major League Baseball. He says that uh, one team told him that it was not their decision, that it was a Major League Baseball decision that Trevor Bauer not be signed. He said another team told him that he was too expensive, even though he offered to play for the minimum. And another team yet said that some stuff had been covered up in the past that they didn't want the media digging uh, to find out about. This, again, according to Trevor Bauer from his Twitter account this week, he says there's zero belief that his stuff won't succeed in the major leagues. Every team that he talks to tells him that he would be their number one or number two starter. Bauer saying this in response on X to uh, the question of another Twitter account, and look, I don't think that there's any question that he's right in terms of his actual pitching ability. The guy is not only good enough. I mean, you you see how many shitty pitchers there are in Major League Baseball? Major League Baseball is crawling with guys who are just absolutely horseshit. And Trevor Bauer is obviously one of the better starting pitchers in Major League Baseball, even if he has lost something since his Cy Young season in the uh, shortened COVID year of 2020, he's still well above the threshold of a guy that Major League teams would love to have, and he's willing to play for the Major League minimum. So, Ronnie T-Shirts, I know that you have been following this story, even though you're, you're not a baseball guy, you're my baseball correspondent today, what do you make of this Trevor Bauer situation where we've got a guy who is clearly of the ability to play in the major leagues, accusations made against him, however, no charges were ever brought forward. So if you're, if you're Trevor Bauer, I think that you've got a real good question to ask here of, am I straight up being blackballed from Major League Baseball? I think I think the the main thing that I take out of this is Major League Baseball has no stones. They are uh, they're afraid that if they let them back in, they're going to get what a day, maybe two days of 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 uh, faceless anonymous Twitter people uh, tweeting comments about how awful the Major League Baseball is for letting this guy in, and then it goes it goes away. So. 
MLB has no stones. They know he didn't do anything, but they're just afraid of the blowback, which is what I think lots of organizations, whether it be sports franchises, uh, universities, businesses, whatever, they're just they're afraid of a couple days of of morons uh, making uh, tweets that that uh, that they don't like. Well, Trevor Bauer is. I, I think he thinks. Uh, based on what uh, the tea leaves that I'm reading, that some comments that he made about Commissioner Rob Manfred uh, may be one of the big obstacles here for him, that he pissed off the commissioner of baseball. Take a look at this. This was uh, a few years ago tweeted, uh, I believe back in 2020, playbook, uh, Carl Ravitch, the ESPN uh, announcer, says, Commissioner Rob Manfred tells me we're playing this is during COVID again. The players need to be better, but I'm not a quitter in general, and there's no reason to quit now. We have had to be fluid, but it's manageable. That is from August 1st, 2020, tweeted by Carl Ravitch. Trevor Bauer responds, playbook, take no risk yourself, blame everything on the players, protect television revenue at all costs, repeat, if anyone thought the season would be canceled when MLB has their dream scenario in place, games down, player costs down, postseason games up, television revenue up, you crazy, he says. Um, Bauer saying, uh, also in 2020, no idea who made this new playoff format proposal, but Rob is responsible for releasing it, so I'll direct this to you, Rob Manfred. Your proposal is absurd for too many reasons to type on Twitter and proves that you have absolutely no clue about baseball. You're a joke. So pointed comments in 2020 from Trevor Bauer, who is pretty well known and not necessarily the most liked guy uh, among his peers and a guy who's not afraid to stir the pot. Is this a case of Rob Manfred saying, yeah, well, fuck you, buddy? Has the directive come down from the top that teams are not to sign Trevor Bauer? Because I got to tell you, it's hard to believe in a world where Michael Vick engaged in dogfighting and made his way back into the NFL, in a world where other players have had domestic violence incidents, I believe uh, there are a number of guys in Major League Baseball who are currently active in the big leagues who have had domestic violence suspensions. So it's not a situation where there's no path back into baseball after uh, a situation like this occurs. Strains my belief, Ronnie, that there's not at least one team out there that wants to get a number one, number two, even, even let's play it conservative and say Trevor Bauer is a number three starter at this point in his career. I think that's, I think that's the worst case scenario probably Uh no team wants him at the major league minimum. I sounds, that it, doesn't smell right. Yeah, you know what this uh it makes me think of I think maybe Manfred uh you know from the last dance you you uh you mentioned the other day with Jordan and 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 now it's personal or whatever exactly Jordan said uh that yeah. he, this is personal. Yeah, now it's personal. Right. Yeah, now it's he personal. took everything yeah. personally. That's why he was yeah. that's why he was so fucking great. Uh, maybe yeah, it is. Well, well, Trevor Bauer, Trevor Bauer, Ronnie, he's he's swallowing his pride. Um, I believe that we have some comments that Trevor Ma uh, Bauer made very recently addressing uh, his comments to Rob Manfred in the past. Let's take a look. And I'm a business owner now. I have employees. I've learned a lot of lessons through management that uh, I can't imagine what I would what my reaction would be if uh, an employee of mine came out publicly and said some of the things about me that I said about Rob Manfred, the CEO of baseball. So, um, yeah, I look back on those comments with a lot of uh, embarrassment and regret. And, um, you know, that certainly made the situation a lot harder on me than, than it needed to be. And I'm trying to repair all those relationships. I'm trying to have those conversations with people. Uh, I've made those adjustments in my personal life. Um, just trying to do the second half of my career better than I did the first half. I don't think that that was easy for Trevor Bauer to do, Ron. He's a prideful guy, and so that is like, I mean, he really wants to get back into Major League Baseball, is what I'm hearing for him to for him to do that. He he seemed contrite, and whether he was or not, he he seemed contrite, and you know, I guess 
uh, you know, you make a mistake, you, uh, you apologize and, and hopefully, hopefully you, uh, you get another chance. So I don't know, I guess it's up to man for it now. Correct. I would suppose that it, it is, if you believe Trevor Bauer, if you believe major league baseball, it's up to the, it's up to the 30 teams to that, make that, their decision. That, that, that just seems unlikely because you know this whole this whole situation made me started thinking about uh, other players in these situations. What was it two years ago? Uh, the guy they called Punk God from San Diego State, Matt Ariza, he was accused of 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 some sexual misconduct, and the Bills immediately cut him. And it came out what less than a year later. Yep, there he is. Um, came out what a year or so later that he absolutely didn't do it. And he's a punter for the Chiefs now. And uh, I looked up uh, box scored the last uh, couple preseason games. And uh, yeah, man, he averaged like 49 yards a punt last week. He had a, a 63 yard punt was as long. So uh, props to props to the Chiefs, at least for for giving this guy a chance when, you know, again, Optics might not look good because, you know, I've always I've always thought that anytime somebody gets uh, accused of something, it feels like there's a hundred units of ac accusation and then there's only one unit of, oh, he didn't do it. And that's really hard to overcome because I'm sure a lot of people still think about, you know, Matt Ariza as being the guy that did what he was accused of doing, even though he didn't do it. So, um, you know, props to them. Duke lacrosse. You remember what happened with Duke lacrosse? Well, gosh, I don't even know, Ricky, 10, 15 years ago. I mean, how how heinous was that for those kids on that Duke lacrosse team to go through what they went through? And then it came out that it was all made up. Um, so, yeah, it's it's tough. But, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully Major League Baseball and, and uh, at least I mean, all he needs is one team, like one team. If, if there's truly not a mandate coming down from 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 the league offices, hopefully just one team says, screw it. We're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna sign you and let's see what happens. Well, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are gonna say, well, he he abuses women and he's scum and fuck him and it, you know, anytime that you see his name come up on X, I certainly see a lot of those comments. But I tend to believe that the judicial process should play out in cases like this. I mean, and. No charges have been brought against the guy, so I got to presume I can't just label him as some sort of sexual deviant if there's no case proceeding with him. I mean, it's, it, it, is, is, is it Major League Baseball's job to enforce and impart uh, justice and morality at a, at a higher level than the legal system, Ron? Well, I mean, they clearly think so. I mean, the NFL is wildly guilty of of doing that, right? Just throwing down suspensions when all there are is accusations. I mean, it it's terrifying to think as a player that at any moment you could just get absolutely blindsided because somebody accused you of doing something that you didn't do, and the next thing you know, you are hiring lawyers, you are you are suspended. You're like it's terrifying, man. Dallas Clark. Dallas, how the heck are you? I'm phenomenal. How are you, Ricky? Doing great, man. Thank you so much for coming on today. It's a pleasure to talk a little bit of football with you. And I don't know what whatever other nonsense we talk about on this program. <laughs> I'm um, sure we're going to make it interesting. I'm, I'm gonna, I, I can guarantee you that. Yeah. Let's have fun. Uh, let, let's go ahead and just toss you into the deep end of the pool here. Uh, bring up the <laughs> do pole. I float, do I have floaties? I, I do I have floaties? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're you, you're gonna you're gonna adapt just fine uh, to, to this show. Go ahead and pull it up here. Let's get this poll is not complete until we get Dallas Clark's vote. Uh, Dallas, I put up these polls every day that are just like four random things that are good, and yeah. I ask the public to decide which one of those things do you like the best. So today's options: Beastie Boys, Top Gun. 1980s Big East basketball and Reese's Cups. So, oh my! I mean, you're you're hitting like besides the 80s Big East basketball. You know, I, I was kind of a Big Ten guy growing up in Iowa. Big East was like, you know, that was like Europe to me. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I think um, 
But is that Top Gun Maverick or is that Top Gun? Is that old school? I mean, you said 80, so that's a, that's the OG, right? That I'm thinking it's the I'm thinking it's the OG. Yeah. Uh, cause Maverick is one of the best movies I've seen. A lot. Um, I, I, I am a glutton. I, I am a Reese's peanut butter cup from uh, Reese's peanut butter cup. hundred percent that, uh, that list that is, it's hard to go against top gun, but I put Reese's peanut, Reese's peanut butter cup in my ice cream with a little dollop of peanut butter and some chocolate syrup. And oh, I yeah. mix that up about every other night. I have a, I have an obsession with ice cream and I think I just eat it cause it gives me a chance to eat peanut butter. Uh, cause I love peanut butter too. So it, it, they, they, uh, they just go together like peas and carrots as Forrest Gump would say. Yeah. I have a look. No, nobody can argue with that choice. Reese's Cup are undefeated. What did you John think? Wayne, let, let's see that. Let's well, I went with beastie boys, even yeah, though, I mean, uh, I mean yeah. Even though, yeah, I, mean, I want to be. I mean, yeah. I mean, that, you want to go for the cool card, right? I mean, that's like that's that's the main card. Like, you got to pick either BCs or Top Gun. Um, and you know, I just saved a cat out of our porch. We had we had babies, uh, little kittens, and a kitten got uh, caught underneath the porch. So I had to screw out. I mean, this this porch was made never to come apart, maybe by a tornado. Um, but I found the screws and, and, you know, I had to like get rid of a couple screws to save this kitten. So I'm a little tender hearted right now, Ricky. So you caught me. So you caught me on a, a, a vulnerable spot, spot in my, uh, in my morning. And so I, 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 I went Reese's. All right. Well, first of all, you deserve the, the Reese's company should send you some free Reese's. You're a hero. You're saving kittens. And, and, and let's get a look at that coffee cup. You've that oh, coffee is, cup you got there is that's a pretty that's strong. Is, well, the, what's yeah, there it is. is what's, what's that in the middle or inside? Courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. And if you want to play tight end in the NFL, that's the, that's what you need to buckle up with every day. It, it's I mean going across the middle, going doing those seam routes that Peyton would throw really well most of the time. Sometimes he'd let float and then just expose. Every rib, you know, Ed Reed had a chance. I mean, he could pick his rib that he was going to spear and try to, you know, in, 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 in implode into my uh, into my lungs. So, you know, so it, but you got to, you know, scared to death. You got to saddle up anyway, brother. All right. I got I, we're going to let's talk some football. I, I'm looking <laughs> at, you know, your career for, for those who may not know, 505 career receptions, 53 career touchdown uh, receptions. All pro uh, player, 2009. I your 2009 season was insane. In fact, uh, I've I've got my producer uh, looking into the question of how many tight ends in NFL history have done this. But in 2009, all right, here you go. All right, it's only you and Travis Kelsey. I'm being told you are the only tight ends in NFL history to have a 100. Reception, thousand yard, ten touchdown season. You, you and Kelsey, the only two who have ever done it. I took a look at that, and I'm like, it's got to be a very, very short list. Uh, Dallas, yeah. t- tell me a little bit about what it takes. Obviously, your skill level, uh, very high. You're, you don't get in the NFL if if you're not at that level. You certainly don't succeed uh, like you did uh, without having that ability. But talk to me about that courage element that I think sometimes we take it for granted. You guys are superheroes to us, right? We, we oh. get in front of the TV on Sunday, and we're just used to seeing incredible athletes do incredible things. And sometimes I think we don't stop and think that like that's an actual human being who is exposing himself to tremendous potential damage in order to catch a football, in order for his team to win. Uh, what, what does it take, man? What separates? Let me ask you this. What separates the okay receiver, whether that's a wide receiver or a tight end, but you can certainly look at it from the tight end position. What separates yeah. the guys who were just all right from the guys that are extraordinary? Uh, uh, great question, Ricky. I, you know, I think it's, 
first of all, it's a phenomenal position. It's my favorite position. You know, I, I think it's the hardest position minus the quarterback. Obviously, they have the toughest position, no doubt, without a question on the field. But after that, I think it's a strong argument for the tight ends. And I love being a tight end. I love that I was a tight end. I love where the, the position has gone. And I love how it has just like exploded onto the scene with great talent. And, uh, you know, back in the day when I played, uh, you know, it was still kind of that, like, you know, tight ends were kind of like that, uh, you know, kind of that unicorn of like, ah, eh, we'll, we'll, we'll let them run a five yard route route on a, you know, third and four, uh, you know, obviously Tony Gonzalez was like the only dude that was just constantly catching balls, you know, going to pro bowls, all, all pro, all that stuff, you know, breaking records, setting, you know, and doing doing his thing. But after that, you know, it wasn't many guys. And, uh, and so the position has changed. Mentality has changed. The, 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 the personality has changed, you know, before it was like, Oh, you're too, too small to play tackle, uh, kind of, you know, too, too, too slow to be a receiver, you know, I will throw you a tight end. You know, now teams are seeking for that tight end. Colleges are recruiting that tight end. They're going looking at basketball players. They're trying to find that diamond in the rough. And so when you start peeling back these layers and looking at what makes a tight end, I mean, durability, toughness, uh, you, you got to have a screw loose. I mean, you, you, let's just be honest. It's like you just have to, um, you just have to have no fear going across the middle and, and blocking the big uglies on the end. Um, you have to have, you know, toughness. I, I mean, strength, like just, I mean, you're, you're asked to block, big, strong, fast, freak athlete, defensive ends, then go get open on safety, um, you know, the next play. So it's just, so when you start checking those boxes, there's not a lot of guys left. I mean, it, it's, you know, there's more, there's more in there. Uh, there's a lot of great young tight ends coming up and which is exciting. Um, but man, to get that full package and, uh, oh, and then also have a, you know, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. That always helps. And uh, <laughs> and I think you look through the history of, you know, that's the argument I love to make with people because um, it kind of gives our tight ends uh, the respect that I feel it deserves. You go back, I mean, past, uh, probably past the Patriots dynasty, you know, like when Gronk and, and Brady were on the scene back when, you know, me and, and, uh, and Peyton, before that, what, you know, I, I can't think of a quarterback that had that tight end, you know, that, 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 that playmaking tight end, you know, I think that is kind of, you know, we, we were kind of in the era where you look at all the Super Bowl winning teams, they have a phenomenal quarterback, obviously, but they also have one of the league's best tight ends and a, a game changer. And, and I think that has stayed consistent and I think it's going to keep staying consistent. So if you want to win a Super Bowl owners, GMs, Get a quarterback, but then your next your next uh, shopping list uh, is a tight end. <laughs> yeah, when I was a kid, there there weren't a lot of tight ends that were making a, a, a ton of receptions. O Ozzie Newsome was probably yeah. the guy that was being utilized the most in that way, and and even I'd have to go back and look at his stats, but they he, he wasn't well, catching Ricky, that if you're going balls. old school. Sorry to cut you off. If you're going old school, I mean, and I have to, like, if I have the, if I have the microphone here, I got to give a shout out to John Mackey because he, you know, he's the guy that, you know, truly is the pioneer of the position, changed it. Um, and then I think owners and teams were looking at it like, uh, yeah, but I, he doesn't exist. And like, there's like, there's only one of him. Right. You know, I mean, it was, you know, the John Dick, you know, the, like, you know, uh, it, it's the, you know, um, it, it's uh, Ozzie Newsom, like you said, like they're just kind of those, you know, those just freak athletes, that kind of game changer, the pioneers, the trailblazers that just kind of came, you know, sporadically where now, you know, obviously the, the, the litter is getting a little, little thicker and, you know, a lot more young talent making their name for themselves. Yeah, no, Mackie, that's I think he was. I believe he was the first tight end in the Hall of Fame, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I, I think you're uh, right. I think you're right. Yeah. Todd Christensen was one of the first guys that I remember 
you know, Holy cow. Yes. kind of move yep. things forward. You know, he was he yeah. was a great receiver uh, in, yeah. in the eighties. Uh, Dallas, t- tell talk to me a little bit about what your body goes through through the course <laughs> of a season. I mean that because you know that's a punishing position because, like as you said, you're blocking the the the, the big uglies. Then you yeah. then you're going out and you're exposing yourself to. Uh, you know, guys that are just ready to tee you up when you when you oh. go over the middle. What's it like? Is that you know, and sort of the 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 attrition as you get into week yeah, eight, well, week that, nine, second half of the season. Oh. How about how about the second week of training camp? <laughs> um, I think it's <laughs> um, you know, I think it's one of those things that uh, uh, you know, that if we're making that you know that super tight end on that list is durability, right? And so you have to take care of your body. And, you know, I, I think that's what athletes have gotten so, so better at, uh, these days than back in the old, you know, we, we iced, you know, ice tub, uh, contrast, hot, cold, um, you know, that type of stuff, but there's so many gurus, so many things, uh, out there for players to utilize that I, you know, obviously the real pros, the true pros know how to take care of the body, uh, know how to prepare their body during the off season, um, and so I think, I think that whole side of being an athlete these days has gone to a whole nother level. You know, I mean, there's so many great, uh, people behind the scene that get these guys ready to crush the season. You know, I mean, I work, uh, you know, I, I see, I see a little bit of it going out to tight end you, um, for the third year now and seeing those guys, we work out for two days. And then George uh, Kittle brings a, uh, a few of his guru folk in from San Francisco, acupuncture, massage, you know, all that stuff. And so it's awesome to be around that one. It makes me feel young and feel invincible again. Oh, yeah. That's another one, Ricky. You have to you have to be you have to believe you're invincible. Like that is like you have a shred of doubt. You have a shred of 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 fear it's it, it, you'll get exposed right away, you know? And so, um, so you have to have this team, you have to have this routine. Um, and we're, we're, we're creatures of habit. And so like, we have our thing, like, you know, after the game, you do X, Y, Z the next day, Monday, you do X, Y, Z Tuesday day off. We do X, Y, you know, so you find that routine and everyone's routine looks different, but it better have a strong focus on recovery and uh, taking care of your body and try to be preventable. Don't wait till something happens. Try to, you know, feel kind of a little, little tight hamstring, you know, get, get on top of that stuff. So the, the, that, that's what the, the true pros do week in and week out. Well, Dallas, you did it week in and week out. I mean, 11 years in the league, uh, some of the <laughs> finest numbers uh, of your era at the tight end position. There's no, there's no doubt about that. You certainly made Peyton's job easier. I'm sure Peyton made your job a lot easier, but that's, <laughs> that's what, uh, that's what it's supposed to be about. Right. Uh, how Absolutely. excited are you? I know, I, I know October 20th, you're going to be uh, taking your place in the Colts ring of honor, which is, which is pretty damn cool, man. Uh, what were your thoughts when you got the word that you were going to receive that honor and what are your thoughts as you look ahead to October 20th and having that moment that you've worked so, so many years to achieve? You know, it, it that one caught me, you know, I, I, I kind of forgotten about it. I didn't really, you know, just kind of, kind of slipped my mind. So when Pete Ward, uh, Mr. Ursay's kind of right-hand man, he texts me, he's like, Hey, give, give me a call when you get a chance. And, and, um, and he told me the news and he, he told me that Mr. Ursay was, wasn't feeling the best that day, but they wanted uh, with scheduling and, and announcing and everything they wanted to get it announced um, so they can start working on the schedule and all that. So he told me and it, <laughs> it was, it was, you know, is that, you know, if you let yourself, um, you know, and you, you just go back and you think about, you know, obviously your teammates and the coaches and the games, the practices, you know, the relationships and, and then you go back even further of like, you know, playing backyard football, you know, um, with my brothers and, and, you know, and, and when I got in the league, I, you know, that was obviously it wasn't even a, it wasn't a goal, you know, it was just, you know, survival, being the best teammate, being the best player, uh, learning your craft, being the best tight end you can be. 
that's pretty much all your focus, right? You know, you have blinders on. Um, and so this, this type of stuff you don't really play for. Um, and so then when it happens, uh, after collectively your body of work, uh, it, it's, it's truly, um, truly honored and, and, and just humbled, but, but quickly to go back to all my teammates and just, you know, it is, it's a team honor. Um, and obviously what would, wouldn't be nothing without all those guys and, and everyone behind the scenes with the trainers, equipment staff, um, the, the cooks, you know, just, uh, uh, strength and conditioning, the list goes on. I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it takes a village and, uh, you know, every athlete there's, you know, behind the curtain, the great, you know, the great Oz, there's, there's those people that really help you, you know, finite fine tune your craft and, and, uh, and, and it's special. So that, that's a great honor to be able to look back, send those texts, make those phone calls and say, thank you. Yeah. Well, that's, that's really well said. And I think, that sort of recognition that that you're sharing there is part of the reason that you were such a that you were such a great player um, is is that you understand those things so well. Um, I, I I think we've got a little tweet here for you to pivot back to just kind of the uh, the silly side a little bit. Do, do, do we have do we have a little something here for uh, uh, for someone's Dallas? calling me out on not picking Beastie Boys? I can feel it. I can yeah, feel no, it. No, no, we're not going to. No, Reese's Cups, you're, you know, yeah, that's always a defensible choice. <laughs> but I don't know. Do we do we have this? Do we have this tweet here, uh, Tim? Or can we come back to it? I'll tell you what. While while uh, my producer hopefully tees up this tweet, let's bring in my, my sidekick, Ronnie mm-hmm. T-Shirts, uh, who is in Nashville, Tennessee right now. And Ronnie Ooh. is a big football guy. And uh, there he is. There's the man, right? And he's wearing his Beastie Boys shirt today, uh, well, as as well. So, yeah, yeah, like I, that, I, see you, it, I see it. Yeah, why <laughs> why is my background phased out? I mean, it's just a blur. And th- I mean, why why are you focused on your background? Like, why are you a blur, Ronnie? I mean, I, I'm I'm so confused why it's backwards. Why I can't yeah. see you, but I can just. I mean, a glaring Buckeye is just like looking down the barrel what is going on here yeah man, it's a, I f- I da- fig- dallas fig- isn't it obnoxious isn't it obnoxious dallas just your eyes Thank are you. being assaulted by Thank this you. ohio state buckeye yeah i mean I, I, and here's the thing i i can't i can't argue too much because we hawkeyes we, we, we have a little pride in ourselves too but yep. but but we have a little less arrogance maybe is that the word i'm looking for i mean just no, a little less can. like you like we <laughs> invented football you know, <laughs> yeah, you you have you have less reason you have less reason to be arrogant. Let's oh, be there you go, there you go. I have to deal uh, with all this. Right, so I have so to deal I with have... this every day, Dallas. Every day, just be so thankful. Every day, I have to look enough. at this. Now, all right, there's a Dallas, reason why you're not in the same room. Yeah, Dallas, I got a, I have a few <laughs> questions. Um, a lot of them are football related, but the first one I want to ask you, I'm going to give you a name, and I want you to tell me what tell me about this name, okay? Okay. Austin Kent. Oh my God. <laughs> well, he is, uh, I think still is one of the finest detectives in the San Diego, um, area. I mean, just, to, I mean, he, he uncovers like more crimes. Uh, he, he really engages, you know, really puts himself in, in, in his work, uh, his craft. And, uh, you know, if he's on the case, you're in good hands. That that's I that's all I I mean, but I barely know him. I barely know him. But that's right. just kind of what comes to mind. Do you do you do you still have your SAG card? <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I got royalties from that uh for a crazy amount of time. And they you know, it was in the hundreds, yeah. You know, and granted, I was on for like 45 seconds, but it really was a great introduction to that world of like, you know, and then they got down to like a dollar twelve, you know, right. ninety seven cents, so. and then no checks. But I'm sitting there and thinking, I'm like, okay, so if, okay, so that's how friends, that's how all those guys and gals yep. make twenty. Yeah. It's like that's how that works. That's to, uh, let, to let the rest of the world in on our little personal conversation. Wait, they here. don't know who Austin Ken is. Oh, this is embarrassing <laughs> for them. This is embarrassing. Do you do you want to do you want to tell them or do you want me to tell them? You do because I don't like talking about myself. All right. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it seems like in. you don't. Yeah, it seems like you in. don't. Uh, 
Dallas appeared on an episode of Criminal Minds, and mm. his uh, character was Austin Kent. So, uh, wow! All right, football, football questions. That's awesome. You can you you can uh, you can you can Google that. It, it and 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 make sure you don't go get a snack or you know by the time you come back, I'll be I'll be done. It's it's yeah. a it's a one one hit wonder. <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay, football I gotta find, I gotta find that footage. I know what I'm doing after the show. All right, football <laughs> football questions. 44. What's the significance behind that? Did you want to be a fullback? Like, yeah, great. I mean, great question. And, and, and I hope it's entertaining. It's an entertaining story. So I walked on in Iowa, right? I, I walked on as a linebacker and my first number there was like 132. Right. And uh-huh. so I worked my way down to like uh, an actual number, right. Uh, double digits. And my second year uh, we had a senior linebacker, Raj Clark. And he was a uh, stud, great dude, great teammate. And, and I had want, I wanted number 11. My, I have two older brothers. They play both, play, both played college football. They're both number 11. One was quarterback at Simpson college division three. Derek was a linebacker at Iowa state number 11. So I went to coach Ferentz. I'm like, coach Ferentz, can I get number 11? Joe Sladry, our senior is graduating. And he said, uh, he said, yeah, absolutely. Well, I come back from the, the come back to spring practice. I'm like, hey, coach, sorry to bother with you. Can I get number? Am I getting number 11? He's like, oh, Dallas, hey, sorry. Uh, we went out to uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, a recruit uh, by the name of Ed Hinkle. Uh, we just offered him. He wants number 11, so we're going to give him the number. And I'm like, what? So this dude that has not bled and, and sacrificed so much for you, he's getting my number. No- okay, that's cool. That's all right. So he's like, but go talk to Coach Bielema, who's my linebacker coach at the time. He's, he's got, he's got, your new number. So I go into his room. He's like, Hey Dallas, got your new number. I'm like, what's that? And he goes, it's going to be 44. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, that way Dick and Greg don't have to take the last name off the Jersey. And I'm like, Oh my God. I'm like, okay, I'll be 44. All right. That's fine. So fast forward, I suck at linebacker. Um, coach Ferentz begs me, or I mean, just like hounds me to switch to tight end. I, I refuse, refuse, finally switch. Stay 44, get called by Bill Pullen draft day. He's like, Dallas, uh, you're coming out to Indy. What number do you want? And I'm like, oh, shoot. And I, I kid you not, this is the same phone call that they show the kids crying and mama crying, and everyone crying. He's like, Dallas, what number do you want? I'm like, well, I can't be 44. Kenny is like, no, not really. And I'm like, you know what? And I didn't watch football very much. I mean, uh, this story will obviously tell that. I'm like, you know what? what yeah. You know, we'll just double it. I'll be 88. And there's a long pause on the other end of the phone. And I'm like, uh, I say something wrong. And he's like, uh, Dallas, Marvin Harrison, where's that number? I'm like, oh, my Lord. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Um, my bad. And, and he was so disappointed in that response. You know, and probably doubted his his pick. He's like, did we did we pick him yet? Can we change? Can we go Witten? Um, so... They, uh, so I get out there, I'm number 44. So to make it legal, they put for like the first couple of years, it, uh, when I was in the league, they put fullback slash tight end. So that's kind of how they got around with it, with the number wise. And then after, and I still remember my, we had a Sunday night football game out in Denver and John Madden, like rest in peace, like the man, right. That was my claim to fame at the time. Cause I, you know, I just had maybe my second cup of coffee. But he is just like making fun. He's like, why is this tight end have number 44? I don't I don't get it. I don't understand this tight end, first round draft pick. He has number 44. That just makes no I mean, just was ragging on me on my number. So, you know, I kept it. Did the best with it. Sorry for the long story, but it's no, man. Uh, no, I mean, you were, it, it, you were I love it. Yeah, you're right. That was a great that was a great story. So you brought up Iowa. Right, right. Um, I'd be re- I'd be on, remiss Ronnie. if Hang I didn't on, ask. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I'd be remiss, Real quickly, uh, Dallas, if I didn't yeah, ask. Go ahead. If you um, would be are remiss, you the, uh, then are you, you must are you the OG? Are you the OG of uh, Iowa tight ends? Because it is now, it is tight end you. And, 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 and guys, we got a couple more in, in, in the old uh, stockyard uh, re- re- ready to let loose here coming up, too. So, I mean, it's, it's the, the stock is looking good. But OG, you know what? I let the fans and I let everyone 
you know, let them run with it. It's awesome. I love what Kittle has done with it. I mean, he has taken it to a whole new level. Um, the whole camp that he does for the tight ends in the league is absolutely phenomenal. First class, him, uh, Greg Olson, and then Travis Kelsey, just, I mean, they're unbelievable hosts. And they got the Rubicon, Rubicon team that just kind of just kind of roll out the red carpet for everyone. And and uh, so, yeah, I mean, we, we, we have a, I mean, I, I flip Greg Olson all the time because obviously he thinks Miami is, and it's like, give like, yeah, Shockey and you. Then like, let's 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 go. Like, where else? I mean, give me a current, you know, dude. Let's go, you know. And so, it's a great argument for us old fogies to uh, to to, to track, talk trash, but um, but it's been great. I you know, tight ends uh, do a phenomenal job in Iowa offense, and uh, they, they they get them ready, and and they kind of recruit those type of guys and uh and it works out well so I, I mean if i have to be the og i'll take that title all right I, I often say we got the best production in the business here on this program we we may not have the best hosts but we got the best production <laughs> uh go ahead let's let's uh Life goal. Life let's goal. pull this up here yeah if we if we have it I believe we've got a, a, a oh still frame. My. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Right there. Those are Impressive. those are three great dudes right there. There too, he by is. The way. I mean. Right there. Right there on the right. That Emmy, some say worthy of Emmy consideration. You. Yeah. That you may have been. You, yeah. You may have been robbed of an Emmy there, Dallas. I mean, I don't see where the who's the athlete, and I mean, I mean, I, mean, I just see four great dedicated actors. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, all right. You you were you were uh, born in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which I'm sure uh, you already know that. I'm not exactly breaking news here <laughs> for you, but for our audience, take a look at this, Dallas. The the hollow dome. Does that was was that around when you were a kid? Was that long gone? Because I just tweeted the other day. Look at that thing. It's glorious. I mean, I bet that was the cat's pajamas back in the day. See here. So we, <laughs> my, my folks are originally from Iowa. My mom went to beauty school in Sioux Falls. My dad, they weren't married at the time, uh, went out there with her. Uh, he was a diesel mechanic, uh, worked for a shop out there. They uh, got married, you know, had had us. We were all, all four of us were born out in Sioux Falls. And then I'm the youngest. And so when I was about one, we moved back to Iowa, back home here where they grew up. And uh, and so I, yeah, I mean, I, I can, uh, I, I got a funny text. Um, I guess. I don't know if Sioux Falls was in the Little League World Series or something, but they had me as their like what is like their like their famous uh, you know athletes or something, and uh, and so I mean I, I I I do claim obviously I was born there, but you know obviously the only thing I knew and grew up was Iowa, um, but I, I am I have split love um, for for the South Dakotians. I actually took the kids up to uh, we went to the Black Hills and and um, did did that whole tour absolutely gorgeous i recommend that to everyone you have to go see that um but it was uh yeah so I, yeah i'm uh I'm, I'm i'm a native south dakota but but iowa gave me my 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 foundation and gave me my grit man it's a great place to call home well dallas i have to say you are not only one of the greatest tight ends in nfl history you are a you are a kitten hero the man is the man <laughs> saving kittens. He's was hauling game, in touchdown passes. He's yeah, he's acting a truly, truly versatile threat <laughs> that this man is. And on the way out, Dallas, I'm going to correct myself. I have been told by uh, by producer Tim the John Mackey was the second tight end into the Hall of Fame. The first tight end into the Hall of Fame well, was Mike Ditka. Mike Ditka. Oh, I said so. John of course, Dicka, the great. The Mike I knew Dicka. I said. I, can we correct? Can we go back and edit? I, I, I was, I was combining two, uh, two players. 
Mike Ditka. I apologize um, for yeah. screwing that up. Oh, but Dallas, yeah, Dallas. I, I screw things up multiple times a day. Don't worry about it. It's just what we do. Well, I, you you have we corrected you have the record in your ear fixing you. I I'm out here so I'm I'm a man on island. So I got I got to fix it myself. So, um, but no, it's uh, I'm glad we got that corrected. Um, but yeah, there's 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 not that many. Um, obviously, um, uh, probably Gronk will probably be the n- next uh, next one to go in, uh, which will be oh, freaking well deserved. I mean, that dude. I mean, talk about beast mode. That was he was on a he's on a whole nother level. That uh, he he was fun to watch. Absolutely. Well, you were on a pretty damn high level yourself, sir. So in, enjoy that Ring of Honor I- induction. Uh, man, it was a blast having you on. You're welcome back on this show anytime. We'd love to Appreciate have you. It, Maybe we could get you back on sometime during football season. And Absolutely. We could dispense Absolutely. a Let's little more wisdom. Absolutely. All right, man. Done. Have a great one. You guys be safe. Don't have a season, all right? You earned it. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm going to get the four pack. <laughs> Yeah, you deserved it, man. Kitten kitten savers, get Reese's Cups. That's the rule. See you guys. All right. Bye, Dallas. Dallas Clark. Ron, how much fun was Dallas Clark, man? That was fantastic, I feel like we made a it? New, new friend today. Oh, my oh, God. He's fabulous. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I love the fabulous. fact that I – I love the fact that I just – I mean, I asked two relatively simple questions, and he just – he took us places, man. He just took us places and it was, it was an enjoyable ride. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Hell of a guy. Hey, Outkick fans on YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button and make your way over to Outkick.com where you can watch the full episode.